Discord. Hey, welcome. Good morning uh, to the Saturday Coffee Chat. Can you believe we are in the first weekend of March? March 7th. Yep, I was going to check the date. Um, so today we just want to talk quickly about overcoming obstacles. And I want to, I'm always going to bring you back to the customer guide because it's got, you know, really everything that you need. And if you kind of revisit this, the one that we made for you, uh, Deb has one as well. And um, we like to give these to our new customers. And then because they, they have everything that's going to help you with, um, you know, getting yourself ready and then keeping yourself in the right mindset. So there is actually a page called Overcoming Challenges. And this is a page about awareness. So what I love and how this lines up with our personal development, which is so key, even no matter what book we have, if you're going to if you keep continue reading the books that we're going through each month, you'll see there's underlying themes to all of them and underlying lessons in all of them. Um, one of the ones in the beginning of this one that we're reading now is just being aware of, you know, where you get stuck and where you're at now, um, where you want to go. And then if you, when you start with that awareness, then you can create a strategy. And so this page in this book is kind of to help you with that. What, what challenges and obstacles and struggles have you had in the past when you're trying to achieve your goals? And now that you're aware of them, what can you be very strategic about and proactive about in creating a plan to um, you know, combat those or to overcome them? And so that's the very first part is just awareness of those things. And um, there's a quote in here. It says, you are the victim of the rules you live by, which I don't necessarily kind of like wholeheartedly believe with that. Um, you can also be the hero of the rules that you live by, right? So it's just that perspective shift. And that's part of that awareness too. If you're aware of things, you can change how you look at them and then how you approach them and the actions that you take. So in every obstacle, there's an opportunity. In every struggle, there's where you'll find your strength. In Autumn Calabrese, one thing she said years when I first started, I remember hearing this and it was like, boom. It's like, strength doesn't come from what the things that you can do. Strength comes from overcoming the things you thought you couldn't. So a lot of times when we start out in our journey, we're like, I'm not sure if I can do this. And then you just start taking action and you realize I can do this. And you start getting more confident. You feel you know, stronger mentally and physically. And you realize you can achieve a lot more than sometimes our minds let us. And that's part of that awareness too, is if you're reading the book, like she goes into, you know, I love that. And like Mel Robbins in the um, five second rule, how she really goes into the science behind our brain and how our thoughts and our subconscious mind and these things that happen that we don't even realize, but they do can control, you know, how we go about our day. And you got your subconscious mind, which just acts involuntarily and it, it has no filter and it takes everything that you've been told and all your experiences and just kind of keeps them, traps them in there. And it will replay those without even, without even you kind of like summoning those up. They just kind of come up. And then you have your conscious mind, which is, you know, more um, voluntary and you have more control over that. But your subconscious mind, you don't really have control over that. But once those thoughts, those limiting beliefs come to the surface, then you have an opportunity um, to recognize that and change that. So really, again, it comes back to that awareness. And then you have to, um, you have to then be proactive in flipping that around and switching that and changing how you're looking at things. Like in recovery, there's this thing called the new pair of glasses. And really, your external circumstances and things can be all the same. But when you choose to put on a different pair of glasses and look at things differently, you can actually create an entirely different life. And the only thing that has changed is what's happening within you in your mind. Yep. So um, very powerful. So things like just stop <clears throat> when you're facing an issue or something that you struggled with before. Just stop. Ask yourself, what can I do differently? Yeah. What can I learn from this? Uh, what should I stop doing? <laughs> you know, sometimes that's what it is. And then um, do the hard and non-glamorous stuff first. So if there's things that you're struggling with because you just really have resistance on them, you don't want to do them, we all have those tasks 
um, whether it's your workout or your meal planning or something in your personal life, you know, cleaning the bathroom. Hello. <laughs> you know, if you get those things done first, then they're out of the way and you have such a freedom of mind. Um, if like, uh, if you don't want a meal plan, like this weekend is the weekend. I have to remind you always, the weekends are for planning. This is one of the be most uh, beneficial habits that you're going to create. Make your meal plan, do your grocery shopping, prep the foods that you need, kind of get yourself set for success. And if you kind of like the, the first thing you think like, oh, I got a meal plan and you want to put it off, put it off, put it off. You're taking this mental energy and if you're dragging that around through the day, take an hour, 30 minutes, it can be short, 30 minutes, quickly line out your plan, a grocery list, you're done, and then you're free for the rest of the weekend to not think about that anymore, right? So, so those are the kind of the, just some things. What can I do differently? What can I learn from this? What do I need to stop doing? Like, I don't know, procrastinating or, um, you know, avoiding things. And then do those harder things, the non-glamorous things, the things that you're, you know, you'd rather not do, do them first if there are things that you know you need to do. And then, so the final thoughts for me are, um, you know, it comes to motivation as well. So we have to really find that deep within us. Um, we have to find a, and so this is where the guide also comes in. So in the beginning of the guide, there's a commitment contract. I would reread that. That also gives you some great affirmations. There's where you establish your goal, and then your why, why the goal is important to you. So we're taking the goal, which is something that we create logically in our mind. We've got this goal, this thing we want to achieve. We then determine why this goal, why achieving this goal is important, and we, we bring in the heart. We bring in that thing deep within us that is the reason why we want to achieve this goal. And, and please make it not ex all an external motivated reason. It has to be really deep within you, something profound, um, if your goal is to lose 10 pounds or fit, um, you know, this G pair of jeans um, or reduce your blood uh, pressure or your cholesterol, those are very uh, tactical things. So, and that's your heart or your head. I want you to, to go into your heart and why is it important for you to achieve those? It's to live a healthy life so that I'm around for my son when he's married and has kids right something deeper that's going to resonate with you because that's what's really going to get you to do the action that you don't want to do um so again and make it so it's not a material thing it's not the number on the scale it's not the pants it's it's that feeling and that long-term like inner reason why you're doing that and and if you're working through the worksheets in here you're going to establish your goal you're going to determine why it's important to you you will look at what challenges you faced in the past um, and how you can be first aware of them and then be strategic on overcoming them. Um, plus then there's the self-love principles because we have to bring that into it as well. We're doing this for things that are personal to us. So we have to have that love for ourselves to be able to show up and do these things. Um, the last thing is just be present. Um, and the message I sent out to some of you today is like, we need to focus just on the I'm going to make healthy choices today. I'm going to track my, my nutrition. I'm going to show up for my workout. I'm going to come and show up and be responsible or accountable into the group, not just for myself, but for others. Um, I'm going to ask when I need help and support and be present in those things that we can do. And when you do a day like that, you will get the results. But if we focus too much on the, the number on the scale or the, the, indulgence that I had that wasn't on my plan, then we get frustrated and we get discouraged and we don't do the things that actually create the results. Mm -hmm. So that is my little spiel on overcoming challenges. And I wanted to open it up and have Deb and Karen also um, just share what they've done and their own experience to help them overcome struggle, challenges, you know, obstacles themselves. Mm -hmm. so Deb, you want to go first? Sure. Um, one tool I have instilled with myself it's it's three things it's called situation behavior impact sbi and i when i procrastinate or 
floundering or something or something's really weighing heavy and I'm looking at the situation that's creating this space in my head and I'm reflecting what type of behavior is it is it because I'm sad is it a burden is it guilt is it shame I, I kind of go through this little thing in my head and then look at the impact is like geez if I don't do this it's going to just be another thing I need to deal with tomorrow, you know, or um, I need to make a decision. And if I don't make the decision today, it's going to impact my husband next week. Or it's just a simple tool, but it gives myself that situation behavior impact. It kind of, I own what it is that's going in this head. And it's even the negative thoughts is like, oh man, I ate that whole chocolate cake with my girlfriend yesterday and the behavior is I thoroughly enjoyed it but yet I'm feeling so damn guilty <laughs> and then the impact I get on the scale and I was like Ugh, you know and that could have spiraled down but then I was like okay what am I going to do different the situation is today is another day behavior is keep them keep doing what you're doing because the impact it will come back off so that's kind of like the tool I have used over and over and over again. And um, it is good to revisit your goals because I get so caught up in day-to-day -day activities and I do so much more for others that I'm not doing for myself. So I have to keep that in mind that what did I do for myself today? And um, I think the final thing is an hour. Something that's really bugging me and I haven't done this quilt I keep telling people I'm gonna do, but I haven't done a darn thing about it. But I just take one hour, just one hour, one hour a day. And that, and that could be the workout or meal planning, but just take that one hour a day and be done with it. And um, I'm not very good at it, but I should be posting more, more of myself in social media, but if I just take that one hour and do it a day, it's done and just walk away from it. <laughs> so that would make me feel happy because I've done, I'm done with it or I did what I best I can do for that moment. So those, those are the little tools I use. Great tips, yeah. Awesome, and Karen, what do you got? Well, I don't think I have any, I don't know that I have any formal tools or anything, but um, I think the biggest thing is being aware of these things that I do. Um, the all or nothing thinking, the, then just going down that hole and going into denial or beating myself up or the negative thoughts. Um, like my biggest challenge besides my own head, I think, is my pain. And so, you know, in the past, i have like, oh, I'm in too much pain. I just won't do anything. But that's my all or nothing thinking. But and that just leads me down into a unhealthy place so now I try to work around it I try to do what I can I modify and then like yesterday I was having a lot of pain and fatigue so I took a rest I didn't I didn't work out and then usually I beat myself up over that and and that again leads to all the all the unhealthy things but I like no I can take a rest and and that's good and I'll feel better tomorrow and do better so I think being aware of all these things is helped so that I, I don't go off off the rails for as long, like way less. And um, I get back to focusing on my goals and what I want. And yeah. Awesome. Love that. That reminds me, um, to, you know, we got to celebrate the progress um, and not like think that we have to be at that ultimate goal, but celebrate the progress every day. Yeah. Um, and that self-love piece, know that you are taking action. It may not be, I mean, in your head, you're gonna think it's not enough, but it is, you gotta, you gotta remind yourself that you are, you know, being proactive and positive about it. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much for sharing that, ladies. Um, I'm gonna do a quick drawing from last week's participation, people who logged in consistently, um, just a random prize drawing, uh, and let's see. It is Sharon, awesome. She logged oh, in, hey. yeah, consistently, she is showing up, so love that. Um, 
I'm going to make it easy on myself because I'm traveling here in a couple of days to send her a coffee card because it's easy. <laughs> Emailed and off instead of having to go to the post office. So congratulations, Sharon. Right, I'm going to end this recording.